Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And it is goal season. So of course, I have poorly drawn out my goals. <laughs> Today I want to talk about my reading and writing goals, um, especially because this year I'm going to be trying something a little bit different where I'm not doing as many number focused goals. We're going to see how it goes. Obviously, when you don't have an easy comparison point. It can be hard to see how you've grown or if you've achieved those goals, um, but some of this is just going to be like vibes, feelings. Do I think I've improved? Yes or no? <laughs> but of course, it is me. It is my channel. There will be numbers. Just fewer. So they're going to come a little bit later. But first, let's talk about my like whole year writing goals. The first of which is to get better at beating white room syndrome. I talked about this before, but it's one of the things that I notice I really fill in last and is one of like my biggest grievances when I'm rereading my own work in the earlier stages of drafting. Um, so it's like, you know, I think if I could get better at it earlier, that would be great. And I've actually figured out a method with which to improve this. As you all might have seen, I've been doing morning pages. Um, however, I have amended those ever so slightly. After I follow the, the rules, the loose rules of the morning pages for two pages, the final page before I look at my phone, before I do anything else for the day, is I just pick a, a scene <laughs> that has happened in my life. And it's kind of like attempting to romanticize my life with the focus being on describing all the smells, all the sounds, exactly what the room looked like but in a like in an artistic way yeah so that's really what i'm focusing on is setting the mood immediately one page to set the mood and that's it um and it has been really fun and we're gonna see if doing this day in day out i eventually get better at white room syndrome in my actual drafts but my next goal is because i have gotten better at something which is outlining I've gotten a little bit better at outlining, I'm feeling more confident in my abilities, and I'm feeling like, ooh, again, all the feels. I think I can return to my fantasy series, The Meridian Maps. <laughs> Depending on how long y'all have been hanging out on this channel, some of y'all will not know this, but I was writing a pirate fantasy series, five books that I had mapped out, but frankly, looking back at it now, uh, I had mapped them out poorly. Um, I really had a lot of difficulties when I went to fast draft some of the later drafts and was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So the fast drafts would go from being like 60,000 words to 40,000 to 20,000. And at the end, I was just like, oh, this is not getting me where I need it to get me. And a series as a whole has its own sort of structure to it, uh, just as individual books do. And I just didn't feel very confident in telling that story, but now I do. Um, now I at least feel confident outlining it. So I guess that's going to be a big goal for the year is not necessarily writing um, all of those books, but it's just going to be outlining them in the in-depth way that I did for NaNoWriMo. And I'm again, once again, very hopeful uh, that this will really help me so that when I go to draft these stories, I'm gonna have it down. I'm gonna have it down. That's what I experienced during NaNoWriMo. That's what I experienced when I've been working on a closet full of cauldrons. Uh, ooh, and we'll continue to work on that during JanuWriMo. More on that in a bit. And this one's a little bit easier to measure because it's either I did it or I did not do it, you know? I could really break this one down into the same thing of, you know, what does the query look like? What does the synopsis look like? And then building an outline from there. So I can have like multiple stages within this outline building. Um, and I'm just really excited to start sort of checking those off. And frankly, to be in that world again, it was disheartening a little bit to realize that I could not do justice to what I had in my brain. As a writer, that really hurts so much. <laughs> to be like, I quite literally cannot put on the page what I'm envisioning. And then the third big goal for the year is what we're gonna get into the numbers ever so slightly. Um, I want to do a little bit more marketing of my books going forward. I at least wanna play around with that and learn what I can about that. I'm really excited as I've been doing like nothing. So I have a good baseline. But of course, when you're learning a new skill, when you're trying something new, that takes time. So. I took my Tada lists and I basically went through all of them and sorted them out into what I was doing each day, what I was doing on average throughout the course of the week. And so perhaps most interestingly or most importantly, uh, I was averaging 1800 words a day. That is every day, seven days a week, 
1800 drafting. Now I was doing some more draft heavy stuff so I actually don't have great numbers for when I switch to more revision uh, projects which is where I'm actually at now so I'm going to continue to sort of evolve this a little bit. Basically I want to peel back what I was doing on average so we're going to take 75% of my average and that is 1350 words for the day so that's going to be the goal that I'm trying to hit each day and then that way it'll also give me some space and time to do this sort of uh, marketing experimentation, I guess, and learning about that. So basically it's just like paring down all of the goals and what I've been doing with the hope of filling that time uh, with this new thing. Um, I don't know, this is an evolving process, I don't know if that's exactly how this is gonna work, but that's how I'm foreseeing it. So if I have a number goal, we're gonna, we're, we're, we're docking. 1,350 a day, that is across all projects, but does not include revision work too. So again, we'll, we'll fine tune this in a bit. But those are my three main writing related goals for this next year. Conquering White Room Syndrome, outlining all of the Meridian Maps projects and having a cohesive overarching uh, story outline and marketing practice. Yes. But from there, I would like to go into sort of quarters, um, or at least this first quarter, since I think that this is going to be a good way to sort of check in with myself is quarterly. I've seen a lot of people doing that. I have attempted that in the past, and we're just going to see if it works for me this time. <laughs> 2023, I can do it. Some of my uh, quarterly goals are because I've already set some of these with alpha readers and my CPs. So uh, January, is Januarivo. And so I will be actually continuing a few projects like A Closet Full of Cauldrons, finishing up the revision on Under the Influence, the revision slash draft as I send it to my brother and do that whole alpha reader thing. But A Closet Full of Cauldrons will be my main Januarivo project. And then a subset is that Jessica and I, my CP, will be exchanging our drafts again at the end of February. So that means Project Death needs to be ready for just by February. So I'll also be working on that. I like to have three projects <laughs> that I'm juggling and so those are gonna be the three throughout January and then they'll shuffle in importance. Priorities are gonna shuffle. As I'll be drafting a closet full of cauldrons in January, if there are 22 work days, most of my 1,350 work goals uh, will be in that project. And so that means I'll probably get about halfway through. I already have some words now as I'm filming at the end of December. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be my secondary project. In February, Project Death will take the lead and that as I work to get it done, done, done for Jess. For Project Death, I'm really once again working on the back half of the story. I did a decent amount of work up in Michigan uh, with Jess actually during that time. And so I'm also feeling confident that from now to the end of February is doable. And then March, we're going to see the return of Painted in Blood Red, which is the cozy mystery that I'd actually worked on uh, at the very end of August that I finished that draft. Um, so I'm gonna try and get that one fully revised and then sent out to some alpha beta readers, hopefully before Camp Nano, um, as I don't think that one actually needs a large overhaul or anything. It was mostly done pretty well, if I do say so. <laughs> but actually a lot of fixing the pipe room syndrome is what I will be doing <laughs> during that revision. So like this is all the goals are going to compound. So those are all of my writing goals overall for the year and then for this first quarter. Um, we're going to see how that goes and what I need to change for the next quarter or if I'm just going to completely forego the quarterly system and work on monthly or whatever else. You know one of the interesting uh, things for me is planning at least somewhat by NaNoWriMo or Camp NaNoWriMo's. So you have that in April, July, and November. So depending on what projects I want to pick for those nanos could potentially shuffle things. Um, alternatively, this might be one of those years where I have to go back to just kind of shoehorning in the projects that I do during those times. I had so much fun picking a new project for November and getting to roll the dog to figure out what it was. Um, and that really just continued the enthusiasm. So maybe it's one of those that for November, I do that again, but for the camps, I can just kind of choose whatever. See, this is, I made sense of all of this. And then my rigging goal for this next year, I crushed my reading goal this year. I set a goal of 30 books and I beat that I think 
before November even started, I wanted to say, uh, which is awesome. So excited. Reading goals for me are ones that can still maintain being really fun, even if I don't win. There's lots of years I've not met my reading goals, but they've always been fun. I know for some people, uh, reading goals feel more pressure than fun, um, but I think, I'm really, I'm putting myself on the spot because I didn't decide this ahead of time. Do I go 35 or do I go 40? I think I go 40. All right, 40 books for 2023. <laughs> I'm gonna have a little bit of a fun TBR jar system because one of my side goals for 2022 that I did not achieve was to read more of my own book collection. Um, failed at that abysmally, but did use the library quite a lot, which again, I, I failed the goal, but who cares? It's fine. <laughs> love going to the library so much but it is a goal again and as I've recently gone through my shelves I have gone ahead and put them in like little jars and I'm just so ready so ready to see if the TBR jar system will help me because it's a it's a scenario of I either read it or I have to give it away it moves on into a new pile um and seeing as how I already sort of corralled my collection hopefully this is the motivation I need once again we'll see if I stick with it but I'm excited to play around and have fun and it's one of my favorite booktube things to watch so we'll see if I actually like doing it myself. <laughs> but that is going to be it from me. Please do comment down below. Let me know what your writing goals are for 2023. Let me know if you also have your split up between number based goals and non-numerical goals. Um, let me know if there's a particular thing within your writing that you're trying to fix if you have your own white room syndrome issue uh, that you've been noticing in either your drafts or your revision process that you're like this year I'm gonna fix it. I would love to know and let me know if you like bulk goals if you've set a certain number for the year just let me know everything tell me all of the goals I love goals whether I meet them or not does not matter still love them <laughs> but thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon with a new video Bye.